Uh, so, hi, welcome to the Android Meetup, hashtag 8, uh, the, la the license meetup in this season. Uh, today we are here because we want to share interesting things about Android development. Uh, we uh, have prepared some short lectures from real life and the main goal today here is to have fun, to learn something new. Um, for today's agenda, we have two. Uh, we have one uh, short presentation and one panel discussion. So, for uh, presentation, uh, Blash Or and his sexy Blash and secrets from Google I/O. So, basically, he will just uh, provide us with brief overview of what happened at Google I/O one month ago, and afterwards we will have. Uh, open panel discussion about best practices in Android development. Uh, in the end, if there will be enough time, uh, we will have some lightning talks, so if someone is interested, please just raise your hands uh, at the end and, um, and register. Uh, if you want to hold uh, a lecture at Android Meetup, or if you have some comments, suggestions, uh, you can leave a comment in our official Meetup group and you can join uh, our Slack channel. And that's everything for me, so let's start. Okay. Um, hi, my name is Blash. Uh, I won't introduce myself further. Uh, if anyone doesn't know me, you can ping me up later and uh, we can chat. Um, I'd just like to say that Jelko demoted my talk from super sexy to sexy. So. Sorry about that. A guy once told me that I should embarrass myself at the beginning of the talk because then it can only get better. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I just want to go through a few features or a few, few things that were announced on Google I.O. Okay, uh, this year, that was about a month ago. Uh, so what was released, what's new in Android, what, um, what's going to happen in the uh, next few months. Um, I won't go into deep, but into deep details, basically just a list of things, so whoever's interested in anything, they can look it up later by themselves. Okay, um, first thing, there's Android 10. Uh, we had release candidate 1 and 2, or beta 1 and 2, for quite some time, out, time now. On Google I.O., uh, there was released beta 3 and last week was beta 4 which is actually final API so what that means is that you have final APIs for the next version of, on, of Android that will be released in the, uh, at the end of the summer uh, and since it's final you can actually already deploy it to applications to Google to Google Play, but only to alpha and beta channels, not not to not to actual actual live app. Uh, so if we just go through a bit of features that Android N introduced, um, the one that was that was most interesting to me, and I don't I don't hear a lot of people talking about it, is partial apps. Uh, what partial apps are is basically now when you open an app, uh, uh, open an app web page, uh, 
let's say Twitter for example, um, you will be redirected to a web page of Twitter. If you have Twitter app already installed, uh, you you will be you can be redirected to Twitter app. What partial apps does is basically um, gives you a a system that you can open application from link even if the user doesn't have this application installed. So basically now you can now you can grow your user base by sharing link and they instead of instead of opening web app will will directly be redirected to an app. Uh, it will not be a full app. Amazing. Uh, it will not be a full app, it's partial app, so you as a developer will be responsible to, to split your app in smaller chunks uh, that, will, that can later be opened uh, in your application. It will be really important to, to give as small chunk as possible because app will need to be downloaded. And once user opens this partial app, so some part of your app, uh, if they will want, they can download your app directly from, from that view. So I think this will be really interesting for, for, for reaching a wider audience with your, with your app. Uh, next big thing that, that is coming to Android N is multi-window support. What that, does, that basically means is you can have open open, you can open two apps at the same time and interact with both two apps uh, at the same time. Um, this was already, some glimpses of this are already in the, in the Marshmallow app, but they didn't quite catch the deadline, so they didn't release it. And now in N, it's, in developer preview, it's pretty stable, it, it works amazing. Um, and, yeah, for you as a developer, basically it should work out of the box, but you, you have to provide in manifest that you support it, that, that you have tested it against it and stuff like that. And you have some, some new permissions regarding multi-window apps, so you can drag and drop from one app to another and that's pretty much it. So it should be pretty seamless to developer to integrate this. Uh, the only parameter that you basically add is that you can add this minimal height to your activity, so this will limit uh, how much it can be stretched down uh, in multi-window view. Okay, uh, next thing, VR support. Um, VR is huge right now, so Android is, is joining the game. Uh, what they did is basically optimize the Android so it can be really clear, really really quickly quick sorry um, so the, the the delay between touch and 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 displaying touch on screen or between uh, rotating and and getting that back into the app um, uh, they really uh, uh, minimize the delay with that it won't be available to to all devices uh, but devices that, that support VR, VR functionality uh, will be will have to have some specific hardware that, that enables this. The main thing that was done here uh, from Android side to, to make it quick was to, to, to change frame buffers to single, to single buffer instead of two buffers uh, that are now in, in, normal, in normal mode. Cool. Uh, next is notifications. Like with every version of Android, um, we get we get updates to our, our notifications. Now in Android M, they redesigned them so they, they look a bit different, and they've added input input functionality so you can reply to to text messages and stuff like that directly from the from the notification, which is really nice feature. Um, and yeah, Android can now group all notifications from the same app into, into a, a small cluster that you can then expand and, and see notifications each by itself. Um, 
performance was was again a huge deal in, in this release. I have the latest preview on my device and it's just uh, way, way, way faster than Android M, Android 6.0. So it's, it shows that they, they've spent much time on performance. Um, next thing is those mod. Those mod was updated so that in previous versions it only it only went into those mode when new when screen was off and the device was still for long periods of time. Now those mode was extended so that when screen is off and you can move around, but it, it will still go into those modes. Not as strict as if his device is on a table or something, but it will still go in those mode. Um, yeah. Oh, next big thing, we're moving back to JIT compiler. Uh, so. If you remember in Android 5.0, when Art was introduced, the main selling point was the, that, we, that Android is going from just-in-time compilation to ahead-of-time compilation. Uh, yeah, in Android 6.0, it's going back to just-in-time compilation. Uh, what's the point? They've really optimized just-in-time optimization based on ahead-of-time compilation that was in SQL in 5.0. So they're basically doing some sort of mixture before, between just in time and ahead of time. Um, and yeah, uh, running your apps and starting up your apps should be now faster in Android 10. Cool, that's our, the main, the main new features in Android 10 that, that, that seemed relevant to me um, for developers and stuff like that. So, next thing. was they introduced Firebase, so Firebase 2.0 rather. Uh, a while ago, I, I don't know, two years ago, Google bought Firebase, uh, which was a bunch of tool for, tools for Android development, and now basically they've just released 2.0, which includes, or a lot of tools that you use for Android development were moved into Firebase, and and some additional that were not not existing before uh, are now in here. Uh, basically, like it looks to me, it's some sort of mixture between or replacement for parts and and I don't know fabric. Um, so you've got scratch ticket reports. You've got Google Cloud messaging. So push notifications were moved from the Google Cloud messaging to Firebase Cloud messaging with some extra functionality that you can push notifications uh, based on location and, and stuff like that, or localized, uh, localized text for certain languages. Um, there are some backend support, so if you can have a database in, in backend that, that uh, Firebase will sync everything with your device, authentication, uh, what is crash reporting, analytics, um, I probably missed something, but yeah. A lot of tools for developers um, that you can use when developing Android apps, so uh, definitely something to check out and yeah, read by yourself to more, for more details. Uh, next thing, Android Studio 2.2 was announced, not released yet, it's still not released. Um, bunch of new features. Uh, first, of course, updates to to instant run, which is supposed to work now, so. Um, next, Espresso test recorder, so you can basically open an app. You can basically open an app, you will see a screen that's on your device on your, on your, on Android, in Android Studio, and you, you can just click and uh, what you would, um, what you would uh, want Espresso to to execute code. Espresso code is generated um, meanwhile, and you can just put your put that in your test. Um, merge merge manifest viewer. So as we can know, as we know, since uh, Gradle is using external libraries, a uh, bunch of permissions and uh, stuff. That, that lives in Android, Android manifest can be merged from libraries into your main app. Uh, till now, you didn't have an easy way to see that. 
uh, and now you have like really really nice uh, merge manifest view viewer then you can see basically what the end manifest will look like in your applications uh, when it gets all the dependencies from from your libraries and stuff like that so really nice nice thing to to when you're debugging and want to see why some permissions in your app or something like that um, app analyzer so basically app analyzer with app analyzer you can decompile an app uh, we can file an APK and see what's in it, what resources does it use, and stuff like that. So, if you're in, if you're, if you're in there, think what other people are doing. Great tool. Um, there's a new layout inspector. Uh, layout, yeah, layout is, There's layout inspector that basically shows the screen on, on shows the screen in Android Studio, and you can and you can analyze how your how your layout looks. And really good tool for the body and just to, for seeing why some view is at some point. Uh, then there's new layout builder uh, that was com completely rewritten uh, from scratch. Uh, it's supposed to work way better. Didn't have a chance to test it thoroughly, but yeah, from the first look, it it it, it works really well. Uh, so hopefully you won't you won't need to write XML all the time now. Uh, yeah, and I guess last but not least, somebody can indicate build uh, support uh, in the newer version from Gradle, uh, which is nice. I uh, haven't tested it out yet, but we'll do so. Um, one important thing is that Android N will bring is Jack and Jill compiler by default, so till now we're, we've been using uh, yeah, it's a compiler now. Jack and Jill uh, will replace that. Uh, they've done a bunch of improvements to it, so now you can actually use dependency injections and dependency injection libraries and stuff like that. So it's great, getting pretty close to to its final form. Um, one thing that they did in Android 10 was also introduce Java 8 support, but not really. Uh, so they've included lambdas, um, but they've included them the same way that Ritter Lambda does, if anyone knows. Basically, your lambdas will be replaced with uh, with static inner, with inner classes, anonymous inner classes. So when using lambdas, you should be really careful because it can it can really uh, blow up your memory. So uh, be be careful when you're using lambdas because they're not the proper Way, the proper Java 8 uh, lambdas that you would use in Java 8. Uh, okay, uh, constraint layout. Uh, this is a new layout that they provide as a support library. Uh, it's still in beta. The, what, what's the point of this library? Basically, for every view on your on your screen, you you show you you show dependencies where it, where it should be based on other views. And um, they want to they want to get rid of the deep layer hierarchy that some apps have now, uh, and with this um, make performance uh, of the apps uh, uh, better. Um, it's still in beta; it's not production ready. Uh, something to keep your eye on. Um, will probably be yeah. It will probably be uh, something that. Uh, in few months uh, will be the default default layout that you use on Android. Uh, it works with the new layout builder really well, and it even transforms from the old layout to the to the constraint layout. So um, it doesn't work in all cases, but um, hopefully, hopefully it will do so. Uh, last thing that that that. that that I think is worth mentioning is Awareness API that Google uh, introduced. Um, it basically allows you allows you to use to push some events to users based on location, based on proximity to some beacons, based on weather, on your activity and stuff like that. So it, it exposes really powerful powerful tools for for you to to engage your, your users. Uh, when when you need to. Uh, okay, that's it for me. Uh, 
Any questions? Great. Uh, moving on.